Hi, I'm Bob Hockmuth, County Agent with the University of Florida IFAS Extension. We're here at the Suwannee Valley Agricultural Extension Center near Live Oak to learn about how bats, birds, barn owls, and other birds of prey can help reduce insect populations on our farms. Hi Holly, what's going on up there? I'm just checking to see if we have any bats yet in our bat houses. This is Dr. Holly Ober, our Extension Wildlife Specialist at the North Florida Research and Education Center in Quincy. Holly, uh, what, why would we be worried about bats anyway? Bats are a great thing to have on your farm because they eat a lot of our insect pests, pests that are uh, problems on a lot of our major crops like corn, cotton, and pecans. So bats are known to feed on things such as cabbage loopers, corn earworms, fall armyworms, leafhoppers, spotted uh, cucumber beetles, fall webworms, and walnut caterpillars. So on any given night, a single bat will consume a large amount of insects, and by putting up something like a bat house, you can attract a large number of bats and therefore get a lot of insect pests control. Wow, I'm familiar with a lot of those pests and they really are important uh, for us to be able to manage them on our farms. How would you attract bats to a farm? Well, here in North Florida, we have about 11 different species of resident bats, and four of them live naturally in either cavities in trees or else beneath the bark of a dead or dying tree. And so if you are in a location where there are not a lot of natural woods around, a great substitute is a bat house. And what are some of the characteristics of a, of a bat house that we would be able to put up on the farm to encourage bats to, uh, to increase their population? Okay, well this is what a bat house would look like up close. So they're always made out of wood. A good option is either cedar or redwood or plywood. And basically it's a, a substitute for a natural tree cavity or underneath the bark. And so you've got chambers. In this case, we've got three different chambers. So bat houses can be built so that they have one chamber, two chamber, three, four, five, any number. If you put up a single chamber bat house, a good thing is that it's lightweight, so it's very easy to mount. But a multiple chamber bat house such as this one is better because it gives more space to the bats and it also gives them more options in terms of temperature. So the cavity that's uh, out the farthest is going to probably be the warmest because it's exposed to the sun. Um, some other characteristics of the bat house, you need some place for the bats to land. So you can either rough up this surface of not only this pad here, but all the surfaces all the way up the chambers, either rough it up with a saw or you can put a mesh like we have here so that the bats have something to grab onto. Now, the bats are looking for a place that's warm, dry, and dark during the day. So you want to make sure that all the seams are caulked so that there's no rainwater to get in. But because it's so warm in Florida, it's a good idea to have a ventilation hole so that there's some airflow going in. Wow, so there's some real specifics that we're after to try to make the bats at home when they, when they do go to the bat house. Absolutely, and one more thing I didn't mention is the overall size of the house. A lot of the bat houses that you can buy on the market are very small, and that's not a very good option for the bats. So you want it to be at least about one foot by two feet so that the bats have plenty of space. Wow, that's really interesting. How would you mount and where would you mount the bat house? There's a few different options for mounting a bat house. We naturally tend to think about putting it on the side of a tree. That's actually the worst option. Research has shown that bats are much more likely to use a bat house if it is either on a post or on the side of a building. So you want the bat house to be at least 12 feet up off the ground, 15, 20, 30 feet would be even better. If you put it on a post, then a good idea is to put two of them back to back so you can double the amount of space for the bats to use. Very interesting. I know that there's some other uh, birds and owls, in this case uh, barn owls and the American kestrel that you've also been doing some work on. Uh, let's go check those out. Sounds like a good idea. So Holly, this is one of the many locations here at our farm where we're using barn owl boxes to help us with our overall IPM program. Uh, tell us a little bit about how barn owls could be used and why they would be important in our IPM program. Barn owls are another species of wildlife that are a great idea to attract to a farm because they consume a lot of mammal pests. So things like rats and mice and voles and pocket gophers are a large component of the diet of the barn owl. And they would mostly be active at night then 
uh, trying to search, search out for those rodents primarily? Exactly. So the barn owl is a good option for those mammal pests that are active during the night. And the barn owls are cavity nesters, and so you can easily attract them by putting up something that mimics a cavity. And believe me, we've had problems with all of those uh, mammal pests here at the farm. Uh, rats and mice in particular get into our vegetable plots, and they can find a cantaloupe seed in the soil quicker than I don't know what. So it's really good to have uh, have some help in relation to that. What kind of a house would you use and how would that be uh, utilized on the farm? Okay, so as I said, the barn owls are cavity nesters, so they would naturally occur in a large tree that had a cavity. But if you don't have any of those around, you can put up a nest box. So the barn owls are relatively large animals and they have quite a few young, so you need a large nest box. The dimension should be about one foot by one foot by two feet long so that there's lots of space. And it could either be a box made out of wood or it could be something round like the shape of a barrel or even made out of PVC pipe. Here we have a manufactured example. Again, it's about one foot by one foot by two feet long. And the entrance hole should be relatively large because these are large birds, so about six to seven inches in diameter so they can easily get in and out. Um, these birds are not very good at collecting their own nest material, so you'll be more likely to attract them if you put in uh, some wood shavings in the bottom. And I noticed the color on this one is light again. Is that impor as important in the barn owls as it was in the bats? Well, in Florida, because it's so warm here, white is a good idea, especially if it's like this, mounted on a pole out in the open where it's going to be exposed to a lot of sun. So you could put this barn owl um, house either on a post, or you could put it on a tree, or you could actually put it on a barn. There is a reason that they're called barn owls. So this, could, this whole device could actually go in the side of a barn, as long as the barn isn't too busy during the day when the owls will be in there trying to sleep. And we've got all three of those locations that are being utilized here at, here at the farm, so I think we've got them covered and we look forward to having barn owls added to our uh, overall program here. The final one I'd like to have you tell us a little bit about is, is the American kestrel, um, how that's important to our pro overall program here. The American kestrel is another nice addition to a farm. They are another bird of prey, but they're active during the day, so they would be killing different types of pests. So they will feed on some small mammals, but also some invertebrate pests as well. And because they're active during the day and these guys are active at night, they won't interfere with one another. So the kestrel needs a different type of nest box. They're also cavity nesters. But for them, you would want a box that's about 8 inches by 8 inches by 10 inches deep. So they like their houses to be a little deeper. You would want it to be up in a tree, usually a lone tree that's kind of out in the open, facing out into an open field, anywhere from 12 to 20 feet high. So so it's high up off the ground. Um, and for them, instead of putting wood shavings like you would with the barn owl, you would put in some dry leaves to help them get started with their nest. Well, it sounds like a really good complement between the bats and the barn owls and the American kestrel that uh, they're going to be adding individual benefits to our overall whole farm IPM program here. Holly, thank you so much for adding this complement onto our uh, uh, overall farm approach here. Uh, this has been an all a new aspect to the farm for me, and it's been incredibly uh, interesting to see all this come about. Well, thanks for having me.